talk about the fact that we're now 41 years today on the Roe v. Wade decision. And I want to discuss that historical uh, decision and uh, break it down. In fact, guys, I forgot to tell you this. Will you print me the Roe v. Wade decision? Just type the Roe v. Wade 1973 decision. And then the, give me the Wikipedia on it as well. I mean, not that that's always accurate, but if you look at the bibliograph, you know, the listing of facts at the bottom, that's where the real intel's at. But I want to refresh that and actually read over some of that in the next segment so we know what happened 41 years ago in the year before I was born. And it was, man, I tell you, the cause celeb when it happened, women were out there wearing shirts saying, I got an abortion. Uh, you got Gloria Steinem talking about how sexy it is to this day. I mean, this is how you really show your man you're the boss is you uh, deep six that baby. Of course, really all it does is allow promiscuity, uh, fake uh, relationships, uh, and using homicide of children as uh, birth control. And it is a dehumanization. And what you do to the least of me, you've done to me, Christ said. And notice now they're getting rid of old people with the death panels, and it's happening in Europe and now here. And they're now saying kill babies up to age three. Will you guys give me the Journal of Pediatrics uh, called for killing babies up to age three? Print that too. I should have done preparation for this. I mean, I did do preparation thinking about it yesterday and today. And then I saw DrudgeReport.com with the headline, 55 million abortions since Roe. And it reminded me, oh, I wanted to do a show on abortion or at least spend an hour or two on it on the anniversary. And so uh, we're going to discuss that and, you know, bring up these topics and these points. But you can't deny human life cheaper than ever. And statistically, people aren't rendering aid like they used to. America and Europe were always known for rendering aid, uh, unlike uh, Eastern culture that statistically does not render aid. That's just a fact uh, as much. Uh, and Western virtue is uh, evaporating very, very quickly. But I still run into doctors and lawyers and accountants and police and military, especially military, uh, and farmers and ranchers and rodeo people and uh, just so many people I know and like who are all about, they're not good because they're, they're hypocrite Pharisees on a high horse telling you how good they are. They're good because they're good. And they like being good. And they feel good being good. And they want to do what's honorable. And it's almost scary how much I like being honorable now because I'm 40 years old next month. And I've always been an honorable person, but man, now it is just dominates me. And even when I know something's good I'm doing, I try to figure out how to do it even better and how to be even more honest. And even when something's sensational, I'll tend to dial it back like my reporters do because I don't want to go all the way. And then I and, and, and I realize the enemy does that on purpose. They they're always saying good people with a conscience are bad and lying about us so that we do, they know how we work so that we will look at ourselves and overanalyze. Look, we're in a war. We know we're trying to be good. We know we're trying to do the right thing. We're not going to ever get all this perfectly right. We're going to make mistakes. Attack, folks. Quit worrying about. You know, we've got our conscience right. We got our head screwed on right. God's our you know, a pole star, and you got to know, is it God touching your heart about something you're doing? Or is it the world? Is it the accuser? Is it the Pharisees? Is it the fake government-run churches and Christians that are there with the fake tough love, fake moral authority that is permeating this country to dominate and control and do mean things and have a hard heart in the name of Christianity? I see that a lot. And I see the fake left the same way. They've got the moral high ground. They're going to tell you what to do. They're going to tell you how to run your life. They're going to tell you that car is bad. Pay them taxes. They're going to, even if the car is bad in ways, it isn't about the car being bad or being wasteful or, or having bad emissions. It's about them taxing you and running your life. So stop letting all this scum tell you you're bad. You understand that? You know you got it right in your heart. you got a relationship with God. The state isn't God. We don't need the priest class. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right. Well, the media today is saying that this is the 41st anniversary of Roe v. Wade. But technically, it was decided January 22nd, 1973. So that would be tomorrow, because on this Tuesday edition, it's the 21st day of January 2000.
14. Uh, but it was argued December 13th, 1971. Uh, it was uh, examined October 11th, 1972. They made one day look at this, and it was decided January 22nd, 1973. And that's directly from the Supreme Court. Uh, I have the ruling here in front of me. But regardless, we're talking about them looking at the evidence for one day, October 11th, 1972. They uh, passed judgment. And they decided January 22nd, 1973. And, of course, it, they didn't really decide anything. They were told by the political class, the Rockefeller Foundation, that helped push this since the turn of the century, the last century, the century before the 21st century. Simply amazing. And I want to open the phones up for your stories of abortion one way or the other. What is it like for folks that have had abortions? And, and thought it wasn't a human and believed the lies and then later had children, those are the people that really get shook up, that really get upset by what they've done and what they've been part of. And, and I want to tell you something. If you've had an abortion because you were told it was a blob and wasn't real and maybe you did it in the first trimester, which I do think is probably obviously a lot less bad overall than when it's second or third. I mean, holy Toledo. And that's I mean, you see those high def scans, the baby sucking their thumbs, playing, spinning around when they're in the third trimester. Um, it's having dreams. It is, it, is, it is unbelievable to know what goes on. And then you find out the type of people that are into it and how they make all this money and uh, the way they uh, kill the babies, putting them in water or throwing them in the toilet. A lot of times they're unable to kill them before they get them out. And people say, oh, let's not talk about this. Well, it's going on. And they want to ban people having signs up of dead babies on billboards. And they want to ban uh, high-def ultrasounds and letting people look at their babies for non-medical reasons because they don't want you to know. And here's the good news. You can pull these polls up. There's a lot of polls out there, but you can search and just the polls show abortion less popular than before. And the numbers are around Roe v. Wade, around 60%, depending on the poll, were pro-abortion, believe the lies. They made it a big cost celeb, the new civil rights movement. Women got more freedom, blacks got more freedom, now kill babies, more freedom, and people kind of bought into it. The last time I saw numbers, there's a bunch of polls out there. Young people, it's as high as 80 plus percent hate abortion, know it's a fraud. That's under 30s. And then even with older folks, it's now 60 to 70% or higher are against it. And Gallup shows similar numbers, not, you know, not quite as strong. But the point is, is that the numbers are reversing. In 2013, clinics are closing all over. Abortion drops and industry is now retrenching itself. The uh, press reports, the National Right to Life uh, Institute reports. So we're gaining ground. The problem is they're institutionalizing it making you pay for it with tax money. Travis County takes money out of everyone's paycheck and has all these new hospital district taxes, you name it, to make you pay for abortions. They promote it in school. So their answer to us resisting them is to double down. But the good news is we're winning the hearts and minds. But Roe v. Wade, and you know, even the woman that was part of Roe v. Wade, you never see her on TV anymore, very rarely, She's been traveling the country for two decades saying that it's horrible, it's wrong, it's a fraud. She was wrong. What I don't like is Gloria Steinem and others wearing shirts saying, I got an abortion. They're back doing that and saying it's sexy, saying it's the ultimate feminist action. I've read these quotes. And it really upsets you. To, you know, It's one thing if you say, look, I got raped or, or, or I did it in the first trimester or I'm poor or yada, yada, yada. They don't tell you that there are more people wanting to adopt kids every year in this country than there are abortions. They don't, they always say, well, nobody wants these black babies. Nobody wants these minority babies. I mean, I've been told that many times myself face to face by pro-abortion people on air and off air. You've all heard it. The truth is, uh, you know, everywhere I go, I mainly see white people taking care of mentally disabled Hispanic and black children because they're racist crackers. And that's why they have those you know, special needs kids that are an absolute nightmare to deal with in many cases because their love is so great, they feel called upon to do it because whites are evil, folks, inherently. Okay? 
person I'm being sarcastic. House committee passes bill to completely ban taxpayer-funded abortions. That's lifenews.com. But if you go to infowars.com or drudgereport.com, we have links to the 55 million abortions since Roe. And you think about that. You know, I kept saying 51 million in the last four or five years because I hadn't checked the latest numbers. It's 55 million dead babies. And then now, what do you expect to come out of this? Remember this article from um, a year and a half ago and people didn't believe it, February 28th, 2012? Bioethicists argue killing newborn babies should be allowed up to age three. And that was in the Journal of Medical Ethics, prestigious journal. And when this first came out, people couldn't believe it. This already goes on in Europe. And then they pulled the journal, and then people said we were lying, but then the journal no said, no, we, we admit we, it was published, but we, we've withdrawn it. And then the London Telegraph picked it up, Fox News picked it up. You know, Drudge Report carried our article. Drudge went, and you know, I'm just keep giving praise where it's due, and clicked on the journal and saw it was real and forced the media to cover it. But for a week, they said I was a liar and it wasn't real. Just like everything else. They're not buying bullets by the billions. They're not training with paper targets of women and children. Uh, there's no plan to confiscate guns. The Army's not training to take on the Tea Party, even though now they admit all that's true. There's no drones in American skies. They're not using them on farmers. Alex Jones is a liar. Now I'll admit it. When we put that report out, they came out and said, there's no way. Dr. Peter Singer at Princeton, who is an icon of PETA, they're really a transhumanist eugenicist group, has said forever, a baby is no more value than a mackerel. A mentally retarded person has no more value, I think he said, than a roach or something. You have to pull up the exact quote. Pull up P Dr. Peter Singer, children are like mackerel, and then disabled children are like, it's really sick. Old people are, you know, just get rid of them. And it's like, oh, you're so liberal. Oh, it's so trendy. Oh, you have such a heart. Oh, you're so good because you're funded by the Rockefellers and anti-human eugenicists who want to make us totally cold and say we're all animals and have no spirit, no soul, no free will. And so, you know, uh, divorce is okay even if it makes your kids, tears their guts out, makes them feel like they're dying. Because, you know, that's just a biological feeling. So you go with your feeling to leave your wife or leave your husband and do what you want because you want to go out and party and you want to be able to do whatever you want and you want to be able to use the wife or the husband as a babysitter when you go out party, you know, on and on and on and on. This worldly, sick system, and the churches endorse it, all of it. Dr. Death and the religion of genocide, disciple of Pianca goes further, warns of 100, wants 100% 100 of humans dead. Yeah, that's one of our articles on NBC News. We need to find the Dr. Eric Pianca. You know, those are good quotes, but, but I want Dr. Peter Singer quotes. There it is, Peter Singer. Since neither a newborn infant is nor fish, it's, yeah, yeah, here's the quote. They just blew it up for me so I can read it. There's a clear crossover between the madcap words of ecology and bioethicists. Princeton University's Peter Singer, probably the world's most well-known bioethicist, advocates the right of parents to be able to kill their own newborn babies. Well, actually, up to age three. This journal just repeated what he says. Singer compares babies to mackerel writing. Since neither a newborn infant nor a fish is a person, the wrongness of killing such things is not as great as the wrongness of killing a person. And see, that's the globalist sick lawyer argument. They dumb you down, they program you with the screen time, the kids, they wire the brains where they're receptive biological androids, in his own words, and then as an adult, you're not a human either. And that's their weird Illuminati, twisted Masonic worldview. That if you're not conscious of what's going on, and you're not aware of all this, and I've been told this by globalists that have tried to co-opt me, I mean, you wouldn't believe the contacts I get. I mean, I, I haven't said this yet, but I've been invited as the keynote winner speaker, and I've accepted at Oxford. I have to pick the date in March now, but they recommended it be a, a Saturday night. And they're going to have the faculty and people there. I mean, it's not just speaking at Oxford. It's speaking, the keynote addressing Oxford. And that's something I can say on record, folks. I have been lately contacted.